Hello, my name is Michael McCabe, Product Manager for RFID at Pepperell & Fuchs. Welcome to part four of this series on RFID and IO Link. In this video, I'm going to be discussing what the IODD file is, where to find it, and how to upload it. So I'll go over to the Attach Devices tab and I'll click on Summary. You'll notice that we've seen some of this information before on the Diagnostics and Configuration tabs. Again, we see Pepperell and Fuchs manufactured this RFID head, and it also displays the vendor ID correctly as one. If you are curious why it says vendor number one, it's because not only was Pepperell and Fuchs one of the 14 original creators of IOLink, but Pepperell and Fuchs was the first vendor to actually register an IOLink device. Pepperell and Fuchs knows IOLink. Next, we see something else that's important. It's indicating that no IODD file is found. Now, IODD stands for IO Device Description, and every IOLink device has one. In a nutshell, if you don't upload one, you basically won't be able to access the user role and process data using the web interface. If you're using a PLC instead to access data, the IODD file, while not always needed, may help provide a better experience. So briefly, let's talk a little bit more about the IODD file. The IODD file is needed because IOLink devices are different from one another, and there are a lot of them. It would be hard to continuously update IOLink masters with correct and up-to-date information for all the IOLink devices that currently exist and will exist in the future. And that's what we have an IODD file for. It tells the IOLink master all about the device that we're connecting to the IOLink master, and it allows us to easily view settings that can be changed right through the web interface. All manufacturers of IOLink devices will provide an IODD file for their devices. And to further clarify, let's think about the information that's coming in from the RFID head. This is information specific to the reading and writing of RFID tags. The way that the data is presented, what data is available, and what settings are available will be slightly different than the information coming in from something like an ultrasonic sensor. The IODD will help clarify for the web interface what and how the data should be shown from these different devices. When the data is laid out nicely for us in the web interface, configuring, testing, and demoing our devices is very easy to do. And many times you're going to hear that IOLink is easy. Well, one reason is that you can make changes in real time, and that's true. Let's imagine that I'm an electrician at a factory and I need to modify an RFID head, currently blocked off by light curtains because the machine it's connected to is running. Normally, I may need to shut down the machine and have a programmer go down to the floor and adjust the read head, potentially wasting time and money. But not with the IOLink base system and the easy to use web interface. I upload the IODD file for my RFID head and by clicking a few buttons, reconfigure the RFID head. I can do this remotely, without special tools, without needing a programmer, possibly even while the machine is running. So let's practice uploading the IODD file. There are two easy ways to locate it. First, I'll navigate through the website to the current RFID head that I'm using. And in case you haven't used our website much before, I'll take some time now to show you how I navigate to find an RFID head. All right, so I now found the F61 RFID IOLink read head that is attached to my IOLink master. Then let's go to software. I'll download the IODD for IQT1 series and once done, I'll open it up. Here is the zip file that I just downloaded. Again, my device is version 1.1, so this looks good. Now, the folder below provides us the HTML document, which I'll cover in the next video. And as I said before, each IOLink device has an IODD file, but also know that one IODD file may contain multiple similar devices. In my case, each high-frequency IOLink RFID head shown in an earlier video is covered by this IODD file. Now please be warned, if you ever upload a zip file which contains multiple XML files or device images, the wrong ones may be chosen. 
Really what we're looking for is a zip file which contains the XML file, device image, company logo, and any associated schematics that you need. And if I were to click on that PNG file, here is the schematic that shows some of the wiring details. Now a zip file isn't needed, you could upload each piece individually if you prefer. I'll simply remove what's not needed. Notice before I upload the IODD file, I don't have access to port 1. After I upload the IODD file, and I'll just take a second here to do so now, I can now navigate to port 1, where I'll have access to the user role menu and the process data. I'll talk about these more in the next two videos. And the second option that we have to locate an IODD file is iolink.com. So once you type in that address, we're going to find the IODD finder, and then we'll wait for that to load. So go ahead, type in the model number. Download and notice that it gives you a nicely packaged zip file, version 1.1 here of course, remove the unnecessary files and simply upload it again to the web interface and you'll be ready to go. Take a second to realize that these IODD files are stored on our IOLink master and you're likely not going to run out of any storage space anytime soon. Also, some manufacturers may not include all available settings in the IODD file. In that case, check the manual as that information is likely going to be in there. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how some of these files, like the HTML file, can help us make changes to our device parameters now that the IODD file is uploaded. I'm also going to review some of the different types of data that we're working with, which will help us better understand how our IOLink devices function. Again, my name is Michael McCabe. Product Manager for RFID at Pepperl and Fuchs. And as always, remember that Pepperl and Fuchs is a leader in industrial automation. So click the subscribe button below to see the new industry leading products that we come out with. And if I did a good job on this video, please click that thumbs up button so others can find it more easily. Remember, if we don't tell YouTube what's important by giving it a thumbs up, we're going to keep seeing only those shocking and crazy videos, which can be fun but they're not helping us to become the intelligent professionals that we aspire to be. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.